This is the Miller Philosopher. The pairing of elves with beautiful jewels has become the token equivalent of pairing a crackhead with a coke pipe. And I'm kind of surprised that this hasn't become a fantasy trope yet in general. The role these shiny objects have played in some of the most calamitous events in Middle Earth should lead one to think to be wary of them and give them a wide berth. Yet, more often than not, this doesn't seem to be the case. The Noldor, for example, were the masters of creating jewel craft and some of the most gorgeous objects in all of Arda, culminating in the three similar old jewels of Feanor, obviously. And this feat doesn't put down the regular jewels that the Noldor made either, since those were enough to put the Noldor on the top of Melkor's shit list. The Cimarils, however, sent him completely over the edge, turning whatever passes as regular envy and jealousy for immortals into a rabid need to control and possess them at any and all costs. One might say that not all the Valar and Elves were so enthralled with them that they tried to possess them. But I would also counter that while that may be true and they didn't go full dark side, they were still caught up enough in them to make major decisions affecting the world. And the elves that were not bewitched by the Cimarron's light still felt their power as something beyond anything that has ever been known to have been made, making an imprint in their minds and also on their legacy. Again, referring back to the Cimarron's, they are long remembered by the elves in Valinor, even though they have long since passed. Then there's the rings of power that was crafted by the Noldor during the Second Age. Objects of such surpassing beauty and power that only the most royal or most powerful of the elves in Middle-earth could wear them. Of course, they had Sauron's Tate on them via the One, or his knowledge, but you have to ask, why bother getting the elves to make rings specifically instead of offering them something else like land or perhaps secret knowledge that they were not aware of? And then, even later into the Third Age, there is the Necklace of Gyrion, or if you go by the Hobbit trilogy, the Necklace of Lost Galen, an object of such great beauty that it gave the king of the Mirkwood elves, Thranduil, a great desire to possess them and were given to him at the by the end of the book and by the end of the series though the reasons for his desire are different in each medium now time to put on my tinfoiled hat i think the reason behind not just the elves but any of the immortals attraction to these jewels is because of their fixation on perfection one of the most notable yet unspoken truths about middle earth lore is that mortals, humans, dwarves, hobbits, and the like, may be attracted to objects of great beauty, but normally are not so fixated on them that they become obsessions. They have never known, quote-unquote, perfection. So, therefore, they can make do without with what they have. Even if there may be some attraction to the jewelry on some surface level. However, Immortals, from the Valar to even the Sylvan and Dark Elves, have either made, seen, or have some more ingrained sense of the tangibility of perfection. Unlike with their counterparts, perfection is not just some sort of ethereal, tangible concept. It is a real thing that can be touched, seen, tasted, and felt through their skin and into their very beings. They are like hot gases that coalesce around strong gravities to form stars. Jewels are the source of that gravity that somehow draws immortals to them. I also think that how they were made plays a part in this as well. That a Yuvatar made the Anuar and the Elves, for whatever reason, to embody all the physical aspects of beauty and appearance in his own mind. They were made perfect in the tangible sense. So, it would only make sense that objects that gather, that draw in almost that internal element, would appeal to immortals. Moreover, perfection represents to them some sense of their own immortality. A mirror, as it were, I think. Their very souls becoming held in their own hands or made into something physical that, that is immortal and forever like themselves. 
hence why they seem to often refer to Middle Earth and its mortals as sometimes tarnished or marred. The perfection in those things is now gone, but the perfection in other things such as the trees, or as I said before, the cimmerals that held the light of the trees, and so on, somehow reflects or seems to hold back that marred element. Now, riffing off what the messengers of Valinor said to the Numenorians about how perhaps mortality of men might be more enviable than immortality, it is possible that the Valar at least were starting to get some idea that there was something greater than perfection, and even the greatest of their works and power, but that it was, for now at least, beyond them and only humans could access it or or go to that place where it existed after death. That essentially, while perfection may be immortal, it was also a prison or had become a prison by which the immortals themselves were now bound to until such time as Ayuvatar, who was in that realm of beyond perfection, decides to reset the board. But having said that, let me know your own thoughts below. This is Miller Philosopher and have a good day.